can get pictures and stuff of a few things we spoke about. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Um, and then we can turn the lights off. Okay. When it's, uh, it's so cloudy, I don't know if the sunset's going to be in this actual sunset. Oh, isn't it? Is it? Is it? Cloudy. It's been overcast all day. There was oh, a mist it? over the cloud. Oh, uh, was mist over the cloud. Mist over the sun. Oh, was there? Yeah, walking down. Oh. Well, we can still chat, but I mean, all I was thinking was uh, if we went, if we went up um, uh, on top of one of the uh, uh, top Why in town? Well, I usually go to the top yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. Go, go yeah, on the top probably. and and doing a. We're gonna go on top of a car park, guys. I'll get the skateboard out, do some yeah. tricks. Yeah. Or go pro. I, I just thought, you know, <laughs> going why do we always start these off yeah. so random? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> How you doing, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Talking with the Kibbles. Hope you guys are enjoying these episodes. If you are, let us know down below. Um, we're gonna do off the cuff episode today. I said in a in the last episode of It's Kibble Talks Watches, um. That I want to talk about balance collections and how I think it's a myth and also something we shouldn't strive for. Um, a lot of people here on YouTube, myself included, when doing viewer collections have said stuff about balance collections and I just don't agree with myself or anyone else anymore. I think that's the best way to put it. Um, what? Let, let's just define what people mean when they say a balanced collection. Well, my way of thinking is that it's uh, a... It's, it's a piece that uh, um, uh, pieces that cover all of the uh, uh, either movements or uh, complications. So whether it's got um, a day date date, um, whether it's got a um, GMT. sub seconds, um, there's, there's, yeah, uh, GMT. Also um, different areas like diving watches, yeah. pilot watches. Uh, uh, Bauhaus watches, you know, when people say balance watches, I think it means a wide variety of things, which is also one thing that is a bit complicated about it because everyone yeah. uses the same term, yeah. everyone has a different definition at the same yeah. time. Balance collections, in my opinion, is having a piece for every scenario for your pilot watches, your diving watches, your, your sport watches, your Bauhaus watches, your dress watches, your complicated watches. Like, it's like yeah. filling them things. And it was one of those things when, when you start collecting that, you think is something you should try, isn't it? You should yeah. feel every yeah. every aspect, every yeah. area. And I think a lot of people start the same way. Um, a lot of you know now that I will be selling off most of my collection if I haven't already by the time of you guys seeing this. Uh, I'm going to be left with three pieces, an Aorus Artix GT, a Citizen Eagle 7, and this piece. Um, that's by far nowhere near a, a, a balanced collection. Yeah. Um, and I just think I think it's a bit of a myth. I think this 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 drive for a balanced collection is one a bit pointless unless you want it, obviously. Yeah. But you know, I I, yeah, think... I, I, I see it as um, uh, that when you start out collecting, that you feel that you should have a piece yeah. that, that covers those to have a complete collection um, without. It covering all those bases, then you, you will never have a complete collection. Um, Do you think it's something you should strive for? I, I mean, when I first started out, I probably thought that way. But and now, I'd say your collection is kind of like I mean, that, isn't I it? I mean, I've got you got a military piece, you got a vintage piece, you got day dates, you got. Horse. I mean, I, I've 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 sort of gone that way with the way that I've collected, mm -hmm. but. That's because I, I wanted something old, I wanted something um, different, I wanted something modern, you know, and it, you know, and it, there's a watch to fit all of those aspects. Um, and obviously, as time goes on, obviously, your tastes change. Uh, fine down. Do you think, yeah, I guess the point I'm trying to get at, do you think there's pressure in the watch community in, in general? I'm not just talking about YouTube, mm. I'm talking about forums i'm talking about just people you think there's there's pressure to have a balanced collection like if people look at your collection and just see like my my ideal collection is going to be all bracelets um all with sort of day day complication sport kind of watches yeah. like that's going to be how my collection will be yeah. um do you think there's pressure to to fill the boxes and um i i think i, I think um uh, the community itself, um, I think, sort of uh, persuades you 
that that's the right thing to do. Yeah. Um, and um, and obviously you you have to make your own mind up yeah. about how you want to collect and what you want to collect. Um, you know, I mean, I, there's many that will only have dive watches. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, won't look at anything else. Uh, it doesn't interest them. Um, I, I like the history of horology. So I, I like to have pieces that have, have sort of meant something, uh, whether it was, um, you know, introducing the subdial. Yeah. Um, to to the watch instead of a second hand, hmm. um, or having no no second hand at all. You know that that was what watches had originally. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, and it was. Uh, yeah. It, I just love the, uh, the the way that um, uh, the watches have, have sort of grown with Evolved. with with tastes and uh, technology as well. Yeah. Um, you know, you've got Speedmasters, and uh, which are you know inspired by uh, racing, you know, motor racing, um, and um, the need for accuracy um, with um, you know with their um, uh, chromi- you know, chromometers, um, yeah. you know, and uh, and obviously with um, you know you've got naval watches, you know, there's yeah, all yeah. that. Isn't there? Yeah, it's true. It's true. You know, it's it's all to do with. Um, but I, I feel that to, to, to have a balanced collection, I think, is it an individual thing. Yeah. It's very much like collecting, isn't it? It's a very individual thing, and nobody can say this is the right way to do it because mm. it's how you feel when when you when you're collecting, and it's what inspires you to look at a watch and say, "Yeah, that's what I like," and and that's you know that's the way that I see it. Mm. So do you think you're going to continue with having a balanced collection? And I think it's just the way it's, it's evolved. I think uh, my collection has, has covered those bases simply because they're aspects of the collecting that I've been drawn to. Mm. And there's specific watches in that those uh, genres that I'm drawn to. And, you know, it just fits into those those sockets. It's not as though I've purposely gone out and said, I need a, a vintage. I need a dive watch. Yeah, it's just the way it's worked out. It's just the way it's gone over. You know, time. because I've got so many watches. I mean, I've got seventeen watches. It's no doubt going to cover most, most of bases, those. Yeah. If I'd only got three watches like itself, yeah. obviously that isn't going to cover everyone. No. no. You know, uh, whereas with a larger collection, obviously. Okay, that brings more. me to the next point. Then, do you think you can have a balanced collection with a small collection, or do you think balanced collections do have to be a more substantial collection? Well. Personally, with the way that the the way I see the industry saying um, a balanced collection is, which is to fit with a dive watch, with a dress watch, a sport watch, um, then obviously having a smaller collection restricts that. So it comes in certain respects less balanced, yeah. but. I think it could still um, be done. It's, so, it, if you've got if you've got a dress watch, if you've got a sport watch, and if you've got um, what would be a, another one? Maybe one with um, a tourbillon or something like that. Or a chronograph or, or something. Or a chronograph. You, yeah. Hmm. Because then the point could be made that you can get a watch, one watch that could fill four things. Yeah. That could. You could take diamonds. So my Aorus Artix GT is 100 meters ball resistant. Let's be honest, you could really go diving with that. Like, yeah. Well, I, I yeah. think you could. Uh, at the end of the day, if I went diving, it'd probably be like what 20 meters. <laughs> Scuba well, diving, you know what I mean? Yeah. So um, it would be perfectly fine for that. Yeah. Um, it can be dressed up with a leather yeah. strap. Even on the bracelet, I think it's quite dressy. It's a day date. Yeah. Um, it's a sport model. Yeah. It kind of fills a lot of different things. Mm-hmm. Then my Citizen Evil 7, vintage, it feels vintage, it feels um, dress, um, what else does it feel? Day Day, again, sporty, I guess, again, it's on a yeah. Jubilee, it's, there's quite a few things there, and then I've got a manual one chronograph, um, again, dressy, chronograph, uh, manual wound, it feels sport, quite a few, sport watch. Yeah, 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 definitely, with the Takumi year and yeah. everything, so, I think you can build a balanced collection on a smaller smaller yeah. amount. I get what you're saying completely, yeah. but I think this is the myth, and I think this mm. is what's built this myth, that 
to have a balanced collection, you need one piece to fill each thing. Mm. And that's where it usually comes down to. You need one diver, you need one dress watch, you need one uh, pilot's watch, you need one Bauhaus watch. And, and it turns into this thing where you need so many watches. And I think to appreciate a collection, sometimes, this is my personal opinion, sometimes it's better to have less. Less is more in that in that sense yeah. of appreciation. I mean, there's only so many days in the week. Exactly. We've uh, spoke about it before you know, about the rotation. We yeah. We, we spoke about rotation. Yeah. I think the more pieces you have to create this balanced collection that some people strive for, yeah. like like you said yourself, it was more, it just happened. Yeah. But with some people, that's literally their goal. Yeah. Their goal is they want one piece for each yeah. thing. I think it draws away. Yeah. And I think a balanced collection, if we're going to change the definition, hmm. should be a collection that you enjoy of a certain amount of pieces that can be appreciated. Yeah, and I think that then goes on to the whole collecting philosophy, which we spoke about in the yeah. past. And um, has your collecting philosophy changed in any way? Because I, that's actually something we could add into this, because it's all to do with collecting. I know I, I said at the start myth of uh, balanced collection. I think I might pull that into the tar, but also just talking about yeah. collecting in general. Um, you said not that long ago you, you'd consider selling everything. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the, the thing is that. Um, when, when I started out collecting, you know, eight, what was it, 18 months, two two years ago, I maybe? It's still not even been a year, you know. Really? I don't think we've um, been collecting a year yet. Yeah, we've yeah, watch it's, it's grown, <laughs> grown quick, hasn't it? Uh, but then, yeah, that's because, you know, of of um, the pieces that we've gone for are within our budgets. Definitely. Uh, we haven't had to save extravagantly for yet. a lot of them. That's what we're both kind of doing but now. But now, now, obviously, we've got particular models uh mine obviously is the amiga Mo moonwatch um yeah. speedmaster so obviously that's going to take a long time to save for mine's a um, yacht master um and many other pieces yeah <laughs> i've got too um, many um again they're going to take a while for me as well to save um, them for so um but you know a collection um can can be um as large or uh, as small as um, uh, as as you wish, really. Um, it, you know, I've just collected um, watches that I've looked at and saw, and it's they've been drawn to me. I, I there's just something about each one that um, uh, that I, I felt. So, you know, was so why was you considering selling more? Well, oh, because. Um, you get to a stage where you know you, you you've got a big collection and you just you know there's only so many days in the week that you can wear them um uh without having to change them every you know every few hours uh to fit them all in and um you know uh i mean i i i personally could easily uh with ex with the exception of maybe what, four or five watches yeah uh you know um easily um uh, you know shed those watches um and um uh, and then there'll probably be a need where i'll probably look again yeah um, do you think there's a cycle to collecting especially is, watch collecting yeah i think so i think we all go through a phase where you know we avidly buy and buy and buy and eventually you get to a stage where you know your boxes are full and you think, hang on a minute, you know, let's let's you know, we've got so many. <laughs> let's let's stand back a minute and yeah. just see what we've got, you know, and you know, and uh, and, and sort of take stock of. of, of yeah, it's of like it. it's like the Rolex phase. There's a thing called the Rolex phase. For those of you who haven't heard it, it's when you start collecting, you think Rolex is the be-all end-all watch. Mm. It's like the the holy trinity. It's the best watch ever invented. And then you start finding out about different brands, Patek, yeah. um, you know, Vastra and all these other yeah. brands. And you're like, wow, Rolex is crap. Mm. You know, screw Rolex. It's the worst. It's terrible. It's this, it's that. And you start hating Rolex. And then it comes back around full circle where you just appreciate Rolex. Mm. You appreciate what they've done, their history, everything like that. And I think we can both say we've kind of gone through that full circle. You know, I yeah. think I think you're still kind of a little bit in the uh, middle section of like, I, don't not, I do not get their prices. Yeah, I still don't understand yeah. um, the... The, uh, the high prices that Rolex se seem seem to believe in their own little world that they, you know, 
I think uh, it's reinforced by all the sales. <laughs> well, I know. So I know, it's I know, everyone I know, buying them, I know, I know it yeah. is, but, I, you know, for me personally, yeah. I, I think the prices are very, very inflated for what the actual watches are. When you look at other manufacturers of what they've got um, but and what they've done. Isn't isn't every price of a watch kind of inflated when you look at it? You know, you look at a Tag Heuer, if you put just the cost of production, mm. it's probably what? 200, 300 quid. Yeah, yeah. I so then they're charging two grand. Yeah. Omega, you, the Speedmaster you want, that's probably like what, three, four, four, five hundred pounds. Yeah. In production and yeah. costs and everything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, grand, I, you know I think, I, mean? I think, what I think it, Rolex inflated that much because of what they've built. You know, the fact yeah. that they are a charity at the end of the day as well. You know, it's all these different things yeah. that are, are linked in their brand. Their like Rolex is the watch you know everyone knows of rolex even if they don't know watches yeah so i think that's why they can charge so much it's like nike you know i i, I personally don't like nike shoes or nike if you're american and they charge like what 120 quid per pair yeah like i love yeah. timberlands yeah and you can get them at like 60 quid per pair if you yeah. look around you know what i mean yeah so yeah. i guess it's kind of in that in that same sort of sense isn't it you know yeah. that, that's why they can charge so much um anyway back to my point which was the, the the Rolex circle is like a collection circle and I want to use someone who I recently reviewed his collection, Andy. Um, I wish I had pictures of what his collection looked like way before that because I think a lot of you guys would have been surprised. Um, he sent most of his previous collection to me which was yeah. Parnis. It was yeah. almost all Parnis. Yeah. Uh, homage watches of different things and I think a lot of people would have been surprised by that mm. to then see what he's got now yeah. and what it was before. Yeah. You know, his best piece was the Auris um, that I now own. And it, it's pretty funny to see the cycle. And that was one of those that I've literally seen the cycle of humongous amounts of watches. I think he owned quite a lot of watches. Yes. Um, way over 20, maybe even close to 30, I think it was. And most of them were cheap homage watches. And it's gone full circle to now where he's got Rolexes, he's got, <laughs> he's got JLC, he's got Grand Seikos, you know. And that, that's kind of like how I see collections going. Obviously, if you can finance it. Uh, that's a completely different subject, but if you can finance it, obviously that's how, how it goes. But I think even if you can't, I personally think everyone's collection starts to slowly slim over time and starts to become more refined. Yeah, yeah, I think collecting is is a refinement of, uh, as, as your experience um, gains um, yeah. in the interest, you know, in, you know, and uh, you know, there are just so so many different brand, brands and um, and complications out there that you know you, there is no there's no uh, uh, right or wrong collection far from it um, you know and, that's that's uh, the beautiful thing you could be yeah. someone who has and I've seen it before you know loads of Rolexes and loads of Seikos you know Jay yeah. Anthony he's got two he's got like watches from two completely different areas yeah that's his collection you know that's the cool thing about it but then yeah. you could have a guy who's just got Patex you know it's just yeah, that's that's the cool thing about collecting. Yeah. There's someone who just owns Timex, you know, is that's the cool thing. It's yeah. no, there's like like my dad was saying, there's no right or wrong. It's it's what you want. Um, and I guess the point I was trying to make from the very get go, which completely went off, yeah, and, as, as we do, as we do. But I think it was a good thing because yeah. I don't think what I was talking about actually at first had any traction, which was yeah. the the myth of a balanced collection. Yeah, that's why I like doing these because yeah. you can talk and and get out what you think. You know yeah. what I mean, and turn it into an actual yeah. subject. And it turns out what I thought was an actual potential subject, the myth of a balanced collection, turned out not really to be, and we developed into something else, which is why I love doing yeah. this. I think they're so cool. Yeah. Um, but what I was trying to say is, I guess at the start, that aiming for a balanced collection isn't what you should be doing, in my personal opinion, unless obviously that's what you want to do. Don't be fooled by what me and other people say when we do collection reviews, saying, we think you should get this piece because you're missing it. You know, you're missing a piece in a, in a pilot watch theme or a vintage theme. Go for what you enjoy and what you love. And I guess that was the point I'm trying to get across, even though it didn't go that way. Yeah. But I think you get what I'm saying. So uh, is there anything else you want to add to, to what we've been speaking about in every area? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I think I think we've... we've I think that was talking. pretty good. Yeah. I enjoyed that. Yeah. yeah it was good. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like. Don't forget to give submissions of what we should talk about next. You know, give us some, some ideas and uh, we'll definitely talk about them. But thank you all very much for watching. Thank you for joining me again, and uh, we'll Pleasure. see you all in the next one. Take care and peace out. Was that about half an hour? Wow, seven years. Uh...
just over 20 minutes. 